welcome to St. Joseph the Worker's virtual Sunday Mass. Today we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, you may not be physically present today, but are invited to enter in, nonetheless, to the spirit of the Mass by responding as prompted and doing the physical gestures as if actually present. To find out more about our parish, visit us at www dot stjworker.ca. Envelopes may be dropped at the parish office or through the mail slot at the rectory door at any time. The presider at this celebration is Father Pierre and the hymns for this Mass will be provided on your screen, so please sing along. Feast of the Lord's Baptism. Today we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. Some would say this is the last day of Christmas. Others might say it's the first day of ordinary time. I'll tell you what it is. It's the feast of the baptism of the Lord. And so we gather this morning with faith and hope and with joy. And we celebrate the Lord's baptism, of course, the same baptism into which we are baptized. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you baptize us with fire. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth is to be all of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you. Christ, only begotten Son, 
Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son has appeared in our flesh, grant, we pray, that we may be inwardly transformed through him, we recognize, who, through him whom we recognize as outwardly like ourselves, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon from the prison, those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sing a 
son to the Lord for he has done glorious deeds make known his works to all of the earth people of Zion sing for joy for great is your means great in your midst is the holy one of Israel of the Apostles. Peter began to speak. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, and when Jesus had been baptized just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, happy, happy, happy. Just trying to figure out where I'm going to stand. 
It's okay if I move a bit? Awesome. Happy, 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 happy new year. Happy God is happy. God is well pleased. Why would God be happy? I hope you're happy, folks at home. Good to see you. Good to gather with you. Perhaps God is happy because God has a pleasing son. If everybody had a pleasing child, I think we'd all be happy, perhaps, right? But the son is happy too. That is how God is. God is pleased because God has reason to be. But it always makes you wonder, right? Why would anybody be so happy? Aren't happy people annoying? People ask me, why are you so happy all the time? I'm not happy all the time. I had my vacation canceled again, yet again, because of all these restrictions. So why would I have any reason to be happy? Well, truth is, we're all the same. Sometimes we're in it, sometimes we're not. But I think, I think I know the secret to becoming happy, to being happy. It is faith, it is hope. It is turning towards God, turning towards God the way God turns towards God with eyes that are pleased. And there is reason to be pleased when one looks towards Christ, who is baptized today, an adult, we should say, not baptized as a child. I mean, he was just born a couple weeks ago, and then he's presented to the world, and then he's baptized and enters into his ministry. It's a son who does what is pleasing, does what he is sent to do in a bold and daring way, and that is pleasing. It's pleasing to God. But there's a part of me at the same time who says to myself, when you look at this world that God created, okay, so God's got a pleasing son, but God has a lot of other children too who are not arguably very pleasing. Like, you know, me or you or us or them or whatever. We struggle. We struggle to do what it is our vocation calls us to do. And this week, uh, you know, the, bi the big story, the big story that we can't shake, can't shake, can't get out of our minds, it's something that not happened right, didn't happen right here. It's the story of the United States, and of course, that storming of the Capitol building. It was troubling. All of it was so troubling. And I, you know, there were many, many reflections upon that, and, and I found myself looking for the silver lining by listening to people that perhaps I never would have listened to before give very profound reflections on all of that in an effort to heal that division. But it's there. It's very profoundly there. We're not talking about a small fringe group of people. We're talking about millions of people who believe something surreal. Millions of people who perhaps would have been there, would have been there storming that Capitol building if they could have been. It's tragic and it's sad, and I share the reflection of Bishop Robert Barron. He was one of the reflections that I listened to who found it particularly saddening and tragic that what they were attacking was itself not something we need to get rid of, but something we need more of. They were attacking a building constructed for and a symbol of dialogue, which is the foundation, which is the means to be a democracy. Our world, as Bishop Barron argues, and I would argue, as Holy Father Pope Francis would argue, as most would argue, is a world that needs more, not less, dialogue and more venues for dialogue. But we don't get to dialogue without first faith. We don't build those venues. You see, 
The problem, from my perspective anyway, is that the venues that exist for dialogue have failed. And I'm not talking about that Capitol building that was under attack. I'm not talking about structures of governance and democracy itself. I'm talking about social media with its algorithms that point us to exactly what we want to hear and nothing else. These are the venues to be, these are the venues for manipulation and control. Now, I can't be completely critical of social media because it's been very good to St. Joseph the Worker Parish. It's serving us very well, thank you, social media. But at the same time, we need a deep reflection on what polarizes us and how we get to a place where that is what we are. Because dialogue is so important, transparent and honest dialogue so that the lie doesn't become widely believed to be the truth. Let's put it that way. Well, the way to get there, of course, quite simply, is faith. The way to get to dialogue with another and to have it, to do it constructively, is to be able to trust. And we don't trust unless we have faith first. Unless we turn to Christ Jesus. And that would be, if anything, my challenge to the United States of America. We're not far from them culturally. But they claim, they make a bold statement, a bold claim that they are a Christian nation. Well, if you are a Christian nation, turn towards Christ Jesus. Be Christian. Learn from him. Behave like him. And find a way to journey together through conversation. Turning towards Christ Jesus is what God does. It's what God does and it makes God happy. God is well pleased in God's Son. In the Gospel, we have a sense of why God would be happy. It's because what was promised is actually happening. Trust is forged within God's very being. John the Baptist proclaimed his coming in the wilderness, and he came, he arrived. And then when he arrived, he had the audacity to enter into the messiness of our world, to be baptized in the tsunami that is our existence, our way of being, to take it all on and to say, I'm going to take this on as my mission. When he's baptized, his ministry begins, he goes out, teaching us what we're to do by doing it, by showing mercy and compassion, by listening and sharing what is truly in his heart, which is peace and hope and love for all. Because he is the Lord of all. The one, Isaiah says, was sent by God, and that alone is pleasing to God. God happily sends God's own into the world and does the work of building a world that is more just and peaceful, a place where prisoners are set free, where the blind begin to see. God does the heavy lifting in Christ. The only part we have in that really is through faith to enter into what he does and share the benefits of doing so. Because God shows no partiality. It's not as if it's a demand on us, but it's a hope in us and a hope that we have should we dare to share it. In Acts the Apostles, that's what St. Peter says, God is the Lord of all. Christ is the Lord of all of all, an impartial Lord, a Lord God who loves generously. And that is inspiring. As Christians, we are baptized into Christ Jesus himself, into 
the very ministry that he has, the very life and the mission that he has. And what an opportunity that is. What an opportunity to do radically what our world so desperately needs more of. Starting with listening. Wow, what a concept. Listening and sharing from our hearts and souls, transparent and honest. It's what our world needs. It what, it's what our world needs more than anything. And should we dare to do that beginning with ourselves, we build up the world that we long to see. A world where stable democracies flourish, where democracies are stable, where people do live in justice and in relative peace, but most of all, in faith, because that's where it starts. Should we gaze towards Christ, our Savior, or gaze back at God, gaze at the heavens the way that Christ, our Savior, does? You can only imagine that when Christ is pulled out of the water and he looks up to the heavens and sees them open, that Christ had a wonderful smile on his face. If we look where God looks first and then go forth, we are what God is. We will be what God is. We will do what God does. We will have happiness. We will have peace. We will have joy in serving our neighbor. And now, sisters and brothers, let us profess all it is that we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and our petitions before loving and faithful God and one another that all the baptized live in justice and unity, faithful to the gospel call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the health and safety of everyone during this time of pandemic, and for continuous coordinated efforts among individuals, nations, and societies, as we all work together to eradicate the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have suffered the destruction of war quickly find the lasting peace offered by the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people who have strayed from God's path find in Jesus a friend who comforts and guides them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this faith community live up to their baptismal promises. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Let us pray the prayer for reverence for life. Almighty God, giver of all all that that is good, we we thank thank you for the precious gift of human life, for life in the womb coming from from your creative power, for the life of children making us glad with their freshness and promise, for the life of young people hoping for a better world, for the life of people who are disabled, teaching us that every life has value, for the life of the elderly, witnessing to the ageless values of patience and wisdom. Like Blessed Mary, may we always say yes to your gift. May we defend it and promote it from conception to its natural end, and brings at last, O Father, to the fullness of eternal life, In In Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands hands for the the praise praise and glory of his name, for for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And and with your your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it, it is, is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit, descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered covenants and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made flesh by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for us, come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Until you come again. There 
therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, up, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope and Michael, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who partake in this offering, those gathered here and those gathered at home, your entire people and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant O merciful Father that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever ever. And now, sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Peace. takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my mind. roof, but I'll only say the word and my soul shall, shall be healed. Come, come to the river 
Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope you've had a wonderful uh, weekend. Uh, if you're, you're joining us uh, online, uh, you know why we're doing this online. Um, you may or may not know that the restrictions that we've been under for several weeks have been extended until February 5th, that is all of them. But so we continue to do things as we have been doing, which means live stream, mass, followed by drive-through communion. You're welcome to come for drive-through communion. Uh, we try to make it interesting, of course. No nativity today. We're kind of beyond that, and we're not going to have a baptized Jesus out there or anything like that either. But we're going to give you your uh, envelopes when you come through this evening. So somebody might be trying to get a, a tent, your attention as you're pulling out, trying to get your name and find out if you have, if you have envelopes here to pick up, because we're going to try and give them out. Uh, it's actually gone fairly well with people picking them up at the office. Uh, they'll, whatever isn't picked up tonight will be in the office this week and continue to be there. But uh, nonetheless, we want to keep them moving. And uh, yeah, I, I hope all is well. Thanks to all who participated in Light Up Richmond. Uh, a special thanks to those who are not from our parish and participated in Light Up Richmond because that was the whole idea is to go beyond and to reach out and engage the wider community, which I think happened. So that was wonderful. Uh, today we celebrate the baptism of the Lord and we enter into his ministry. Into the world we go, folks, uh, proclaiming this good news. I hope we do it well. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and preach the gospel. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Go out, go out to all the world Tell the good news Tell the good, good news Go out, go out to all the world And tell the 